There does seem to be some data suggesting a bit of a plateauing uh, happening in some parts of Europe at this point. How do you view the path through the winter with the virus resurgence, the possibility of extended lockdowns? Now, as you say, most of European countries are in the midst of the second wave, but uh, many virus, vi vi virologists uh, tell us that this might not end before Christmas, but that we have to uh, be prepared for three or four months of repeated waves and requiring repeated wave breakers. So uh, an intensification of restrictions uh, to prevent uh, the flaring up again of the wave. So um, hmm. if we believe that this is the case for the next three or four months. This, of course, will be a hard hit for the European economy, which already is the weak spot in the world. So it's a lot weaker than what we see in terms of growth, in terms of activity in most other parts of the world. And when you think about Germany, when you think about lockdown measures version two versus lockdown measures uh, version one, of course, they're not the same. How much, uh, what, is the, what is the size of the, of the impact on the economy the second time around versus the first? What's your sort of rule of thumb there? So far, the, the restrictions in the second wave are a lot lighter than the first in Germany. For instance, schools and daycare centers remain open. Most shops remain open, which were all closed in the first wave. Uh, so this is a big relief, in particular for families. And um, uh, But still, we estimate that simply in the month of November, um, the German economy, the, the, the companies and uh, sectors most affected, directly affected, so traveling, uh, restaurants and so on will lose about 20 billion euros in terms of revenue. And this is only for the month of November. Um, the big concern is that companies have been cutting back on investment, that consumers uh, are actually saving more. So even though the German government has been very generous in terms of fiscal stimulus, many people don't consume. Uh, so despite the German economy doing better than most other European in terms of the economy, we still expect a contracting German economy by about 1% in the fourth quarter. So we are cle clearly in a seesaw uh, pattern of the economy, and we simply don't know how long that will last. That really depends on uh, whether the second wave can be ended and we can return to a new normalcy afterwards very quickly. Yes, it's very easy to find the bad news, isn't it, Marcel? I mean, yesterday we were talking here at Bloomberg about, well, Germany was, was projecting higher tax revenues despite the toll taken on the economy by, by the virus. Were you surprised by this? Was this just a, a, the, the forecast was too gloomy the first time around and this was just a, a correction? I mean, what, what is the, the tax and spend situation in Germany like at the moment? There's hardly any country in the world that has spent more uh, on the economy, on stabilizing the economy than Germany. Um, I think one has to put it in perspective. Yes, the tax numbers, the tax estimates are better than what was feared in the summer. In the summer, we had an economic contraction for Germany of about 8% for 2020. Now we estimate probably a contraction of 6% for 2020. Uh, this is a lot stronger than what the world economy is contracting. It's weaker than countries like France, Spain, Italy that are con and UK that are contracting a lot more. Um, but this further revising up of the, of the estimate is really the key factor why now the tax figures have been revised. And it's not that uh, the, ta the, the government is, is receiving more tax payments. It's simply that the decline, the collapse in tax revenues is a little bit smaller uh, than what we previously estimated. And what about the need for new debt? What is your thinking at the moment, Marcel, on the need for new debt to get Germany through this? I know you've been critical of the, uh, the debt break in the past. What are your thoughts on, on getting rid of the debt break at this point? The debt break is clearly has very strong support in Germany. It is very restrictive. It basically requires uh, the government to run a balanced, structurally 
balanced budget um, that is has been suspended for this year and also for next year. Uh, but the big challenge clearly will be uh, Germany has a very quickly aging society. Uh, working population is declining more rapidly than in almost every other country in Europe. So after uh, the, the, this crisis is over, Germany can no longer rely on an economic boom, on a big increase in employment uh, to um, generate more tax revenues and to reduce debt. Moreover, Germany will have to invest massively in digital infrastructure, in digital transformation, in climate protection, in innovation and education, so that after the pandemic, the big um, contradiction or big problem is uh, that revenues probably won't be rising as quickly tax revenues as they did after the global financial crisis. Public investment will have to be very strong, but yet at the same time, the, the, the debt break requires uh, an actually not just a stable deficit, but a balanced budget. Um, and that will be very hard to achieve without substantial tax reform, without tax, substantial tax increases. And my, yeah, I'm wondering whether this will be a key issue in the election debate. Germany will have national elections, federal elections next year. And um, I think this will be a hotly debated issue. How does Germany want to reduce debt while at the same time uh, be strong on public investment?